Imagine waking up to find that everything you work so hard for, your home, your safe space, has been completely flooded, your furniture destroyed, and your life turned upside down. That's the reality for a lady I know here in North Carolina. She was living a quiet, happy, and peaceful life until a few months ago when storms and hurricanes swept through the state, leaving destruction behind. This is an unprecedented storm and causing us to have an unprecedented response. Many families were displaced, grocery stores flooded, homes destroyed, and lives lost. Thankfully, she survived with her family, but her house was not so lucky. Every room, every piece of furniture, and every memory stored in that space was ruined. To make it even worse, she has no flood insurance as she's not located in a flood zone, so you know rebuilding is going to be an uphill journey. In this series, I'll be helping her pick up the pieces. We're going to transform her space from the ground up, giving her the chance to rebuild not just her home, but her sense of comfort and peace. She's asked to keep her identity private, so we'll focus on the process of breathing new life into her home. This journey will be about resilience, hope, and the power of community. Stick around as we dive into the restoration journey, showing you each step, each decision, and every bit of love we're putting into the space. Welcome to the Rushalin channel, where we're turning devastation into inspiration. Let's call this series From Flood to Fabulous. Let's go. Like I mentioned, her house was completely flooded. Every piece of furniture from the bed to the couch to the chairs, her clothes, everything was wet. Things were floating and heavy things, they sank to the bottom. Outside was the same, water was everywhere. The water just keeps coming and coming. Like it's just not letting up, it just keeps coming. So the entire backyard is completely flooded and the water just keeps coming in keeps coming in it is it is absurd it is absurd it is absurd i i don't even know like we're trying to pump water out and like water is what i i, I don't even know here we are a few days later after renting a pump to get all the water out and removing the carpet that lined the floors of the house everything had to go I don't know if you've ever dealt with or smell wet carpet before, but it's nothing you want to deal with. And let's not talk about the cost that it will be to replace the entire thing, especially because she doesn't have flood insurance. Flood insurance is one of those things that most people don't think about until they need it. And by then, it's way too late. Because here's the deal. Regular homeowners or renters insurance doesn't cover flood damage. If your home gets flooded, whether it's a little water in the basement or a full-on disaster, you need special flood insurance to get help paying for the repairs. If you have flood insurance and disaster strikes, the insurance will help you to fix your home and replace your belongings. It doesn't make the flood any less stressful, but at least you won't have to figure out how to pay everything yourself. And if you don't have flood insurance, that's where it gets rough. Without insurance, you're basically on your own. That means paying out of pocket to repair your house, replace your furniture, and deal with the cleanup. While you may get a little bit of assistance from the government, it's usually just a small loan or a grant, and it's definitely not enough to rebuild your whole life. Why any of this matters is because this lady, she did not have flood insurance. It's one of those things where you think, this could never happen to me. And yet, here we are, trying to start over with no safety net. Flooding doesn't just destroy homes, it leaves families wondering where and how they'll recover. That's why this project is so important. It's not just about fixing a house, it's about helping someone rebuild their life. Like I mentioned, everything was destroyed, so everything had to be removed from the house, and the very little that could be saved, they were put in temporary storage while the construction and demolition began. As I was doing a walk through this house, I could tell that this project is gonna take a lot of work, a lot to repair and a lot to replace. A lot to decorate with a very meager budget. It's gonna be a lot just to find things that are functional, affordable, and aesthetically pleasing. 
But I convinced myself that I'm the girl for the job and I'm going to get it done. <laughs> At this point, you can call me Bobby the Builder. <laughs> so let's get shopping. So right now, we're in home. Theater. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Just a pause to remind you that if you're looking for authentic, traditionally made Jamaican black castor oil, we've got you covered. You can get it from Jumbeline at www.jumbeline.com. I'll leave a link to it in the description bar below. So that's your authentic, traditionally made Jamaican black castor oil. Also, a lot of you have always been asking me about my Jamaican necklace that I almost never take off. So this is it with a pendant. It's a map of Jamaica and it has all 14 parishes written on it that is also available on Jumbeline's website i will leave a link to both the castor oil and the necklace in the description bar below so you can go get them for yourself all right thank you so much for watching now let's get back into the video so right now we're in home depot and we're about to pick out some things for the house um, we have to get the finishes we have to get things for the kitchen for the living room for just about everywhere in the house but as you can see it's totally gutted so we're gonna need to put back things so that's what we're working on we need to pick out tiles we need to pick out countertops um, flooring and all that jazz it's a whole lot to be done but I'm excited about it and after we got the construction done then of course we're going to get to the designing and the decorating and I'm excited about that to keep it. Hello! So the house has one main bathroom and a half bathroom just outside of the primary bedroom. The theme colors for both bathrooms are grey and white. For the main bathroom, we are searching for a 24 inch vanity with mirror and a 20 inch vanity for the half bath. This was not an easy feat as the ones we like were all bigger and as you can tell these bathrooms are kinda tiny. One thing I noticed was that none of these vanities have shelving on the inside which means that we would have to add our own shelves to maximize the storage space. That was not cool. I need 24. 30. These are all 30s. We need 24. I think that's why we chose what we chose because of the size. Very, very well put. Oh, that is what, yeah. Because you needed specific size. I needed 24. Okay. Like okay, let's look at the options for 24. 24. Oh, this is, that's that color right there. Oh, that's a pretty color. That is a pretty color. But in the floor is marble though. The floor is already, you know, gray. It's gonna be two different. It's two different, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you know, the marble. Yeah, yeah. the back. texture. Yeah, I don't Same have design. to be plain because we already have a texture on the floor. Why are you learning? I'm proud of oh, you. I mean, I can do a little something, something. You know? <laughs> I can put something together. I think the solid gray. Yeah. Is. Yeah. It's softer on the eye. Do we have a solid gray? Oh, it have to be that one. We spent quite a while in this aisle looking at vanities, but just couldn't seem to find the right one. When we found the right measurement, it would be the wrong color. And then when we found the right color, it would be the incorrect measurement that we wanted. Until we finally found something. That and put shelves in or... Oh yeah, go with this one, this 24 in inch in the gray. Okay. It's 149, right, so, so it's in, cheaper. We keep in the 24 inch in the gray. Oh, oh, and here is a mirror. Choosing the right mirror was also another task because mirrors didn't come with the vanities in the sizes that we wanted. So we had to get those separately. But boy, it's a lot of choosing. But it's fun at the same time, for me at least. So we picked out the bathroom vanity and a mirror okay. was picked out. So now for the lights. Do we do this one or these ones? This one. Okay. Right, my next question is do y'all have any of the mirrors where it has the light that come on when you touch it? No, they're separate. Not unless you do something online. With Home Depot online? I mean we, we have a huge online store. Mm -hmm. You could look online. Okay. And if you saw something that you really liked, okay. if that it was touch, I've had that in the hotel and I'm not gonna tell you it was really nice. Yeah. Um I wouldn't want to pay for it myself. Yeah. 
um, probably seen, but we just have lights over our mirrors. You decide when you go home and you want to do some research on a mirror that's lit up on the edge because they are nice. They are yeah, really, they nice. really nice. We can look at them. When we go sit down with John, there's a couple computers there. Since they did not have what I was asking for, we selected these lights and then we were on to countertops. I must say that the staff at Home Depot were all very helpful. We had a lot of things to choose and a lot of questions and they were very patient with us. So big ups to Home Depot. So getting this island and not this one. This is a, this is a solid butcher block. Uh huh. You you had two cabinets here. This could be a this could be a uh, an island. You know, if it was only one cabinet deep with no overhang for chairs, if it was just a workstation, it would be a workstation. Then this will work. Do y'all have any already made islands like the portable ones? No. No. We also chose a black oven range to match the black fridge and stove that's already in the house. So we're choosing this finish for the cabinets. This is what it will look like. She has a black fridge, a black stove. So we're trying to get a black microwave um, that goes over the stove. But this is what is the finish for the cabinets, all white. All right, so right now I'm trying to find a good backsplash that will work with the cabinets and the countertop that we just picked out. We're trying to stay within a budget, right? So we can do really expensive finishes. So they have these peel and stick tiles and I'm considering these for the backsplash because they're also waterproof so no water should get in and they have used it before and it has held up really well and uh, it looks really good when it's done so it's definitely an option so let's look at what they have so the cabinets are going to be white with like a white and gray waterfall countertop so they have these white gray silver options that may look good Let's see, comment below and tell me what to choose. I kind of like this one. If you guys have been here and supporting this channel for a while, you would have remembered when I did the shipping container project that I used these subway tiles in the kitchen for the backsplash and they turned out pretty good. So that's one of the main reasons why I'm considering it now because even two years later, it's still holding strong. Okay, so okay. time to look at kitchen sinks. Oh, I like a... this one. That is pretty pretty. Uh, this is nice, but you want a double sink. I do. I mean, you have black stuff. There's a black sink. That's yeah. an option. No? You want a silver sink. Yes. You want this? What about this one? We have all these. Mm -mm. It's $429 later. Right. Not that. Not this? Why Why hard not this? Is it, is it deeper and bigger than? Oh, it is deeper than what we have. Okay, the one we have is very shallow. Ah. Uh, yeah. Right. And here's another one. And just so you know, that one is 200 bucks. Here's another double sink. You like this one? Well, it's got, you like this one? The one big one small? It works. Right. If that's what you want. What are we all right, so we're settled on the cooler. And then we picked out the faucets and we went with the brush nickel, which seemed to be the running theme for all the faucets throughout the house, whether it's the bathroom or the kitchen or even the shower head, all brush nickel. And right after we went and we sat with the gentleman that was helping us in Home Depot and he customized the cabinets for us. He put it on the computer, put in all the measurements and then show us exactly what it could look like, which I think is a pretty cool service so that you know exactly what you're getting before you even purchase the cabinets because you're able to configure it in the space, how it 
in the way that you'd like to see it you know beforehand so that was pretty cool that took some time we were there for maybe about 45 minutes just doing that but it was super worth it oh that's amazing you know what john i really think you can <laughs> i know you're the best oh but this, this looks good this looks really good so we're the refrigerator going outside of it? yes the over here somewhere? No, no, the opposite wall. It's over here. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just moved you out of your seat. What kind of person am I? I'm sorry. After this long process, we called it a night for Home Depot. And of course, we were back a few days later to get more things off the list to complete the project. Like I said, we have a long list, so we're just getting started. To get the house back to livable standing, we need 1,426 square foot of LPV floors, 15 sheets of drywall, 5 rolls of fill, 32 pieces of baseboards, 5 rolls of insulation, paint, doors, hinges, and a whole lot more things. Stick around for part 2 to see how we have transformed this home from flood to fabulous. If you have enjoyed this episode and is looking forward to the series, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button. Also leave your comments and your suggestions below. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in episode 2. Bye! Rush it in, rush it in. Rush it in with the vlogging Rush it in, rush it in, rush it in A good sing thing, DIY thing Traveling, exploring, touring A little ear thing, a little teaching A beer fun thing, cause you boring Like, share, comment, subscribe, subscribe. Watch every video member say she not hype Like, share, comment, subscribe, subscribe. Watch every video member say she not hype Hey, mm -hmm. it's Rush it in. Share and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause she not boring.